For thousands of years, the dire wolf has been extinct and locked in time, frozen in tar, preserved in ice. The magnificent beasts of our planet's past lost forever, or so we thought. What if I told you that right now, three dire wolves are alive on this planet that they haven't walked on in over 13,000 years? Their names are Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi, and they are the resurrected dire wolves. In 1993, a fictional movie showed us dinosaurs brought back to life through ancient DNA. Scientists scoffed. Impossible, they said. DNA degrades too quickly. What was once science fiction has become scientific reality. But how? A Texas company called Colossal Biosciences has achieved what many thought impossible. They've engineered the birth of three dire wolf pups, creating living descendants of an apex predator that disappeared from our planet over 13,000 years ago. How did they do it? And more importantly, should they have? These seemingly innocent pups represent a turning point in human history. For the first time, we haven't just discovered a species, we've reversed its extinction. The critics have a point. What Colossal has created isn't truly a pure dire wolf in the strictest sense. It's a genetically modified gray wolf with specific dire wolf traits. Therefore, we need to understand exactly what these animals really are. But the science behind them is revolutionizing our understanding of genetics and extinction itself. Using DNA extracted from fossils, a 13,000-year-old tooth from Alaska and a 72,000-year-old skull from Canada, scientists mapped the dire wolf genome. They identified over 1,500 genetic differences between dire wolves and modern gray wolves. Therefore, they selected 20 crucial genes controlling everything from bone structure to muscle mass. But editing these genes into living wolf embryos required technology that didn't exist even a decade ago. The embryos were implanted into surrogate gray wolf mothers, who gave birth to pups that look remarkably like their ancient ancestors. Larger, with different skull shapes and muscle structures than modern wolves. If you're thinking this is just the beginning, you're right. Dire wolves once ruled North America as apex predators, weighing up to 150 pounds with a bite force stronger than any living canine. Their sudden extinction left an ecological void that has remained for millennia. Therefore, bringing them back could theoretically restore lost ecological balance. But what happens when we introduce prehistoric predators into modern ecosystems? And dire wolves are just the start. There's far more to come. Colossal's next project is even more ambitious, bringing back the woolly mammoth, a species that disappeared just 4,000 years ago. Therefore, if successful, they could help restore the mammoth steppe ecosystem and potentially slow climate change by preventing permafrost melt. But the ethical questions grow even larger with each species we consider reviving. The dodo bird, the Tasmanian tiger, both are on Colossal's revival list. As we watch Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi grow, we're witnessing the dawn of a new era, one where extinction might no longer be forever. Therefore, the technology that created these wolves could eventually save species on the brink of extinction today. But are we playing God or righting past wrongs? The power to resurrect extinct species raises profound questions about our relationship with nature. Should we? Can we? Must we? Colossal Biosciences was founded in 2021 by entrepreneur Ben Lamb and renowned geneticist George Church. Their mission sounds like something from science fiction, to resurrect species lost to extinction. Using cutting-edge CRISPR gene editing, ancient DNA recovery, and reproductive technologies, they've turned that fiction into reality. The Dire Wolf Project represents their first major success. These wolves weren't just any predator. They were specialized hunters that dominated the Americas for over 250,000 years. Standing larger than today's gray wolves, with more powerful jaws and robust frames, they were perfectly adapted to take down the megafauna of the Ice Age. When these massive animals disappeared around 13,000 years ago, it wasn't just a species that vanished. It was an entire ecological function. Top predators shape ecosystems in ways we're only beginning to understand. They control prey populations, influence migration patterns, and even alter the physical landscape through what scientists call trophic cascades. This is why Colossal's achievement matters beyond scientific curiosity. By carefully sequencing ancient DNA and comparing it to modern wolves, they identified the genetic differences that made dire wolves unique. Some of these genes controlled physical traits, their broad skulls, powerful neck muscles, and cold-adapted metabolism. Others influenced behavior, sensory abilities, and immune functions. Using CRISPR-Cas9, the revolutionary gene editing technology that won a Nobel Prize in 2020, scientists precisely modified gray wolf embryos. 
They didn't replace the entire genome. That would be impossible with current technology. Instead, they targeted specific genes to recreate key dire wolf characteristics. The resulting pups aren't perfect replicas of prehistoric wolves. They're more accurately described as dire wolf proxies or hybrids, genetically modified gray wolves carrying crucial dire wolf genes. But they represent something profound, our growing ability to reach back through time and recover what was lost. The process wasn't simple or straightforward. Hundreds of attempts failed before these three pups were successfully born. Many embryos didn't develop properly. Others were rejected by surrogate mothers, and some grew but carried unexpected genetic issues. This raises serious animal welfare concerns that can't be overlooked. Therefore, critics argue that resources might be better spent protecting species still alive but endangered. But proponents counter that de-extinction technology is already benefiting conservation. The same techniques being used to revive extinct species are helping scientists understand and potentially treat genetic diseases in endangered animals. The Woolly Mammoth Project illustrates this dual purpose perfectly. To bring back mammoth-like creatures, Colossal's editing Asian elephant cells to express mammoth traits. Thick fur, cold-resistant blood, and smaller ears. These modified elephants wouldn't be identical to historical mammoths, just as the dire wolf proxies aren't identical to their ancestors. They would be ecological replacements, animals engineered to fill the same ecological niche. This matters because the mammoth steppe ecosystem once covered vast areas of the northern hemisphere. These grasslands stored massive amounts of carbon in frozen soil. When mammoths disappeared, the ecosystem changed. Trees and shrubs invaded, reflecting more sunlight and accelerating permafrost melt, which releases greenhouse gases. Therefore, mammoth-like elephants could potentially help mitigate ecological changes by restoring this ecosystem. But the project faces enormous technical challenges. Elephants have two-year pregnancies and complex social structures that make breeding programs difficult. The dodo bird project presents different challenges. This flightless bird from Meridius went extinct in the 1600s, killed off by sailors and introduced predators. Genetically, it was related to pigeons and doves, making the Nicobar pigeon its closest living relative. Colossal plans to edit pigeon genomes to express dodo characteristics, creating birds that could eventually fill the dodo's former ecological role. But what was that role? Dodos evolved in isolation on Meridius, and their ecosystem has changed dramatically since their extinction. Some plants they may have helped propagate through seed dispersal are now in danger. Therefore, bringing back dodo-like birds could potentially help restore these plant species. But Meridius today has introduced predators and human development that would make reintroduction challenging. The Tasmanian tiger, or thylacine, presents yet another set of considerations. This marsupial predator was hunted to extinction in the 1930s, accused of killing sheep. Unlike the dire wolf or mammoth, people alive today saw living thylacines. There's even film footage. The last known individual died in a Hobart Zoo in 1936. Because its extinction was so recent and directly caused by human persecution, many feel a moral obligation to bring it back. Genetically, it was a marsupial related to Tasmanian devils and quolls. Therefore, Colossal plans to use these related species as genetic templates and surrogates. But the thylacine's former habitat in Tasmania has changed, with invasive species and development altering the landscape. These projects raise profound ethical questions. Is creating genetically modified animals to resemble extinct species actually de-extinction? Or is it creating something entirely new? Do we have a right to manipulate the genomes of living species to recreate lost ones? And if we succeed, what responsibility do we bear for these revived species? We are at a crossroads. Humanity is racing forward with AI and artificial intelligence. And at the same time, we're reaching back into the deep past, trying to correct our mistakes or maybe recreate the wonders we've lost. Which direction are we heading? Forward into the future or backward into a science fiction reality made flesh? For now, Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi remain in a research facility, carefully monitored as they grow. Scientists are studying their development, behavior, and health. Each day provides new data about how closely they resemble their ancient ancestors. In the eyes of Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi, we see a future we never thought possible. A future where the past walks beside us. Where Ice Age predators howl beneath modern skies. And so the question remains, with the power to bend time, rewrite genomes, and resurrect the ancient, will we use it wisely? Or will we create a new kind of extinction?
If you found this video fascinating, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. We're diving deeper into the ethics, the science, and the secrets behind today's boldest biotech projects. Let us know in the comments, would you visit a modern day Jurassic Park? Should we bring back extinct animals? Until next time, stay curious, stay thoughtful, and never stop asking the big questions.